one day Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! יברכך אדוני וישמרך, יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה, יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And good morning, everybody. Happy Resurrection Sunday. My name is Pastor Jeff Greider, and I'd like to welcome you to this NTEB House Church Sunday service. Today, I'd like to talk about saved by the blood of the crucified one, Jesus the Christ. The Roman scourging of Jesus, as recorded in your King James Bible, it shows a type of punishment that can scarcely be believed in our day, and yet it happened. The principal action of scourging was not simply to inflict as much pain as possible, but to remove as much skin as possible. When Jesus hung on that cruel cross, it was with a back that was flayed open right down to the exposed ribcage. The Romans weren't just trying to kill Jesus Christ. They were looking to very much humiliate him before he died. This was a very different type of death. The Bible says this in Acts 8.33. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. In order to make a payment for sin on the cross, a certain currency was required by God Almighty. It's the only kind he could accept, and that was a payment for sin in blood. But not just any blood, for the blood of bulls and goats, the book of Hebrews tells us, can never take away sin. It needed to be eternal blood. Only God has eternal blood. So in order for the sin to be paid for, God himself had to be the sacrifice and the blood he shed was his own blood. Take the blood out of the equation, you have no payment. His death alone would not and does not atone for sin. This message I would like to bring you this morning, a message on the true story of Jesus' death on the cross at Calvary, I want to show you what really happened and why God's blood has the power to not only save your soul, but to act as a daily cleanser in your sanctification as well. The Bible says this in Acts chapter 20. This is our Apostle Paul talking, written by Luke. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, actually 27, <laughs> no, oh boy, 25, Acts 20, 25 through 28, Paul says, And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God and underline this next part of the verse. If you have a paper Bible, underline, highlight, star these next words, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 
That's where salvation comes from. That's where the church comes from. I don't want to get ahead of my message today, but the Bible says um, when Jesus is talking about his church, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That church was built on shed blood. You are saved on shed blood, and there's just no other way around it. And today I'd like to bring you a message on the importance of the shed blood of Jesus Christ as we talk about the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, uh, for all these that are gathering live uh, and for everybody who will listen in the archives. We thank you, Lord, for a congregation that extends to every one of the 50 states and in 132 nations around the world. And we are so glad and so grateful for the increase, Lord. We are actually, God, I'll be honest, I am stunned, stunned at how far you have expanded our coasts and enlarged our borders. And we're glad and we're grateful today. And Father God, today we're going to be talking about the blood, not just any blood. We're going to be talking about your blood. I believe Acts 20:28. 20, I believe that you purchased this church and the Bible says that the church is your body. I believe that you paid for the whole thing with your shed blood. And so, Father God, give me power and liberty to preach and teach your preserved word this morning. Um, uh, cleanse anything that defiles, uh, bind anything that would seek to disrupt this service today. Give us a good spirit in the chat room and uh, let your word go forward this morning in a spirit and truth and power. And we ask all these things, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we live in a day and age, we live in a day and age where um, the blood of Jesus Christ is hardly preached anymore. Um, I thank God for a, a handful of Bible-believing Baptist churches around the world um, that still preach and, and teach your truth. Uh, I'm glad and I'm grateful, Father God, for any church that preaches and teaches your preserved word. and uh, But I'm telling you, these things are, they're hard to find these days. And we live in a day and age where um, people don't talk about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. They don't talk about the price that had to be paid so that you and I could be set free. They don't talk about the price that had to be paid in order for the church to be established. And we're going to talk about the blood when we get to the sermon part of the <laughs> of our service today. Um, but there are those people who want to remove that. They want to remove the blood from their preaching. The Bible is a bloody book from cover to cover. From It starts in blood and it ends in blood. And one of the reasons why we get so aggravated with the new versions is because the NIV, the ESV, and even the New King James, they erase verse after verse after verse about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And today, uh, I want to preach a message when we get to that part of the service. I want to preach a message about the blood. And uh, we always say about... Um, most of us here are Baptists. Uh, you don't have to be a Baptist to be part of NTEB. Um, but I'm a Baptist, and I, I have been a Baptist for 31 years. I, I am an ordained Baptist pastor. Um, but the doctrine of the blood, you can't get past that. And if you miss it, you miss everything. And so today we're going to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, we're going to talk about the blood. And uh, it has the power to save your soul. It has the power to keep you saved. And it is the very thing that enabled Jesus to build his church. It was built on the blood. 
I'm so glad that you've decided to worship with us this morning. Remind you of that to rob you of your joy now that you're saved. I remember one such day I was going by a place way down back yonder down memory lane. The old devil said, I remember when you were saved. I remember you remember what you did right there? You know who you you know who you was hanging with there? And I had to admit, I said, Yeah, I remember that devil. And that day, I didn't let him do all the talking, though. I said, I remember all of that. But there's one thing, only one thing I can say to you about it. Is it's under the blood. Hope this song will be a blessing. of long ago Oh Satan came right by my side making me feel low He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray He wanted to discourage me as I walked along my way He said you're undeserving cause I know where you've been I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags. My goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise is your name. I'm not what I used to be. Now tackle my sin and shame It's already gone I'm happy reminding me It's under the blood Oh yes it is I'm glad it is I like this Praise His holy name Victory was given me When I was born again He was my stained and sinful past and brand new life with Him No longer do I bear the mark that she had to rub my way With happiness and peace of God Praise God and I can say It's time to go for praise His name take that blood out of the Bible, you have a weak, powerless, useless book.
Romans chapter 3, verses 25 and 26. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say it this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Do you realize (laughs) that you are saved not by your own faith, but by the faith of Jesus Christ? It is the faith of him, not the faith of me and you. And you know what Jesus put his faith in? He put his faith in his blood because it's God's blood. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is God the Father manifest in the flesh. The only thing that could take away your sin is the shed blood of an eternal God who never dies. The people who wind up in hell because they reject the blood, because they reject that payment, they reject that sacrifice. Those people who wind up in hell, they're going to stay there until God dies. Now, when does God die? He never dies. Why? Because he's eternal. So if you have the blood of an eternal God, how long do you live for? (laughs) You live forever. This is where the doctrine of eternal security comes from for the church age. Nobody living in the Old Testament had the shed blood of Jesus Christ. When you lived and died according to the law of Moses and believing what God had revealed, you went to Abraham's bosom because you didn't have the shed blood of an eternal God. That's why they couldn't go to heaven. Nobody in the Old Testament was saved when they died. They were safe. They were safe in Abraham's bosom. But they had to wait till Jesus went to the cross and made the payment. You know what salvation is? It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It is a legally binding transaction. That's what salvation is. And the only way that you can make that transaction is you have to exchange your sins for his blood. Once I wandered in sin's black night There was no way to make It's still the blood that cleanses within From the highest star in heaven To the depths of the sea It is still the blood of Jesus That brings victory to me There are those Saves from sin, it's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven. 
the depths of the sea, it is still the blood of Jesus that brings victory to me. And it's still the blood that saves from sin. It's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of you're just tuning in this morning, uh, we're talking about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, it is that precious blood that washes away our sin, that salvation, that um, 1 John 1, 9 says that if we say that we have, no, that's not 1 John 1, 9. Um, 1 John uh, 1, 9, uh, written to the church, not written to unsaved people. First John 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Um, that sanctification, First John 1, 9, is not about salvation. So you get saved by the blood of the crucified one, um, and you stay clean by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. First uh, John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Everywhere you look, it's that blood. And in just a little bit, we're going to talk about, I'd like to bring you a message today about the shed blood of Jesus Christ, something that is despised here in the end of the Laodicean church age. Um, People don't preach on the blood, but we're going to preach on it today. But before we do, we're getting ready to go into our prayer time, and um, many, many, many people with really urgent prayer requests this morning. If you would like us to uh, lift up your prayer or your praise this morning, just post it in the chat room. And if you're listening, if you're in front of your computer and you're one of those people who say, I can't find the chat room, just go to ntebradio.com ntebradio.com and you will be in the chat room Uh, after this song we're going to go to our time of prayer and praise Uh, very very glad that you are here this morning and this is the church It's time for us to face the fact that for decades we've ruined our name. Just look around us, it's easy to see that we share the blame. It's on you. of us are hurting, but we have all been called to carry the message to this human race. Our message is love. Our anthem is grace. It's time we remembered who If you want 
Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, and we're so glad, we're so grateful, God, that you allow us to fellowship together. Your word says, to neglect not the assembling together of yourselves is, as the manner of some is, but so much more as you see the day approaching, and uh, we do see that day approaching. If you're saved today, if you're born again, you're part of the church, you're part of the body of Christ, and the day that is approaching for me and you is something that the Bible calls the blessed hope. Uh, Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. And Father God, we're glad that you woke us up today. We're glad that you put food on our table, that you put clothes on our back, you keep a roof over our head, and you give us everything... um, that we need. Your word says, and my God shall supply all your need through his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And um, Lord, we appeal to you this morning and uh, we ask you to meet with us yet again and lead us and guide us in all truth. We give uh, uh, praise for James Rogers has a praise report. His 99-year-old Japanese grandmother-in-law just got saved. She says she believes in Jesus Christ as her Savior because it is the truth. Uh, James has been praying for this almost every night, and it has now happened. Um, He says thank you to everybody who has prayed. Uh, Turns out we have a lot of NTEB listeners in the nation of Japan, and uh, we're so glad and grateful for that. We pray for lost souls this morning. We pray for Sarah and Eric and Becky Jacobs. We pray for Greg and Melissa Price, Glenn Clark, in Jeanette's family, we're praying salvation for Cheyenne, Bridget, Tony, Dion, Matthew, Samuel, Trevor. Uh, up in Maine, we're, we are praying for uh, Derek, Adam, and Roland Carrier and their families. We're praying for Jesse and his mom to get saved. Um, we're praying for Lori Ann's grandfather, Irvin, to get saved. Uh, In New Jersey, we're praying for my three brothers, John, Jimmy, and David, that they would get saved. Uh, Rachel's dad, Ralph, we're praying for unsaved Catholic family members of the Bolton family. Colby Bohan needs to get saved. Dina Long Kruger is asking salvation prayers for her son, Jordan. David Peck for salvation. Susan Weir's Bicky, she's praying for her entire family. Uh, Daughters, Valerie and Marie and son and husband, both named Greg. Kentucky Jeffrey, he's praying for Tyler, Tevin, daughter-in-law, Caitlin, and grandsons, Logan, Ronnie, and Russell. Uh, Jay and Bob from Wisconsin, they have unsaved Catholic family members. Danielle for salvation. Connie, three unsaved children. Joshua Gaskins and his wife, April, salvation prayers for friends, Stephanie and Michael, and for Uncle Steve Davignon. Brandy asking prayers for her family salvation. Rita in Colorado, who is now, I think she's in Missouri. Uh, She says, please pray for Dan's salvation. Uh, Two gentlemen by the name of Ron to get saved. Spray of sunshine. Uh, Salvation for three sons, Daniel, Patrick, and Brian. Shannon is praying for Lori W. and Brian M. Uh, Patrick needs to get saved and to overcome his lottery ticket addiction. Amen. Salvation will do that. Rick Dotson needs to get saved. Jan Lacker, salvation for son David. Barbara is praying for Robert, Naomi, Blake, Alex, Ethan, Raquel, Janet, and Shandell. Nicole Zimmer, she's uh, praying for salvation for her best friend and her family, the Meads and the Cooks. Uh, Cheyenne is praying for Barry K., Terry C., Alan G., Melody, Nick Rick, and Beth. Karen, salvation for children Jason and Tiffany, and grandchildren Summer, Austin, and Emmett. Barbara, salvation for son Jody. Mark Sherlock, salvation for four-year-old Savannah and her mom Stephanie. Werner Bukes, salvation for friends Bob and Abby, uh, who are into Gaia worship. Nancy is praying for Brandon and Michelle. Jill, salvation for husband Jerome and son and daughter. Kathy Hughes' son for salvation. 
Haley sees friend Zane up in Maine, who is a Jehovah's Witness. He needs to get saved. Lulu asking for prayers for unsaved family members. Miles and his family needs to get saved. Um, Kathy and Dennis Giacomino, salvation for their children, siblings, and grandchildren, um, including but not limited to Dennis, Michelle, Lorenzo, Roman, Gianna, Jessica, Sophia, Justin, Blondie, Giovanni, Luca, Dominic, Deb, Maurice, Courtney, Josh, Gabe, Haley, Emma, Amy, Rachel, Dan, Evie, Lincoln, Felicia, Ethan, Bob, Stacy, Lauren, Andrew, and Karen. Dawn D, salvation prayers for David. Paul Caulfield, salvation for his father, Fred, and sister, Susan, and his brother-in-law, Frank. Ramona Hayes, uh, asking prayers for her daughter, Kimberly, for salvation and deliverance from alcohol. Also, salvation prayers for grandchildren, William, Jason, David, and Amanda. Patrick is praying for Jack and Aaron. Chelsea B., Salvation for ex-husband, his parents, his sister, and her husband. Adam would like salvation prayers for his wife, Shana. Lori B. needs to get saved. Shira McPherson, please pray for my son, Scott, salvation, and daughter, Nicole, who is backslidden. Um, Cheryl and Mark Fennell need to get saved. Kevin Thompson would like salvation prayers for his father, Tim, his sister's husband, John, Kylie's father and brother. Um, as well as um, uh, friends and people he works with. Steve Graves needs to get saved. Elga needs salvation. We are praying that many in the Ukraine who received the Bibles, we sent 12,000 Ukrainian New Testaments, and we're praying that many would uh, turn to the Lord with that. Rob is asking for salvation prayers for his three children, Max, Olivia, and Mikey. Phyllis T., salvation prayers for her husband. Um, Summer Robbins is praying for her, her dad, retired captain and former U.S. Navy SEAL Brian Robbins to get saved. Todd's brother Thad for salvation. Marie's friends, family, Ashley, Dayton, Alyssa, Kyle, Brandon Grace, Micah, and Macy to get saved. Adam and Katie are asking salvation prayers for parents, sisters, brother-in-law, nieces, and nephews. Gary Tatterson asking for salvation prayers for his parents, his brother, and cousin. Joe Rusiello is asking salvation prayers for mother, sister, granddaughter, and in-laws. Ellen would like salvation prayers for her grandsons, Braden and Logan. His Grace is Enough would like salvation prayers for Rob, Summer, Sue, and Mike, Carl, Jason, Rachel, Jason, and Carrie. Lola's son, William, and his wife, Lindsay, they need to get saved. Hannah's mom needs to get saved. Bruce Bridges, uh, we've been praying for his two exchange students, Elena from Italy and Milena from Spain. Anja is asking salvation prayers for Hanu, John, Charles, and Anna Lilsa. Dave Evans, water dog in the chat room, is asking salvation prayers for his friend Taylor, an atheist. Viviana is asking salvation prayer for her brother, Javier Reyes. Scott Thaler needs to get saved. Um, Adam and Katie also praying for neighbors Jason, Eddie, and Brian. Loretta Oates would like salvation prayers for sons Kenny and Matthew. Jane is asking salvation prayer for son Troy. Julie Lynn is praying that her friend Katie Ann would get saved. Chona would like salvation prayers for Estefano Jr., Eugenia, her kids, Maricel, Cherry, and Chona's siblings, uh, Julia, Maria, and Trisha. Chuck Edgerton is praying salvation for his son Jacob and his mom, Lynette. Samantha is still asking salvation prayers for Beth. Rita from Colorado, she's praying for unsaved Catholic family members. Um, Deborah Hare, she's praying for unsaved family members. Teresa would like prayers for her, her unsaved family members. John needs to get saved. Lisa is praying salvation for her father, John. Annabal, salvation for his unsaved children. Deborah Milton is asking salvation prayer for her son, Billy. 
Hap Nightingale is asking for salvation prayers for her sons, Jimmy and Zach. Uh, Trisha would like salvation prayers for co-workers, officers Davis, Maury, Hancock, and Heath. Colonial Man would like salvation prayer for Don Huff, Claire, and Virginia. Norman Merkel would like salvation prayers for his daughter Kara, granddaughter Ava, son-in-law Stephen, and for his kid's mother, Lynette Crew. Little Toe would like salvation prayers for Trevin. Henrik Larson would like salvation prayers for his parents, Kygel and Elizabeth, sister and spouse Ingrid and Frederick, uh, his mom's aunt, Barrett, who is 95 and still going strong. Roz GB would like salvation prayers for lost family members. Brian needs to get saved. Andrew Whittington needs to get saved. Marisol Barcina is asking for salvation prayers for her Catholic family in Panama. Rapture 57 would like us to pray for unsaved Catholic family members. And Gail is praying salvation for Jim. Shirley Medor would like salvation prayers for her brother and his wife. Uh, Eric Brian Yu would like salvation prayer for his parents, Anna and Norillo, members of his family and co-workers. Um, we are praying for Tony the Carpenter and his son Cole to be saved. They were just here at the bookstore yesterday putting the last of the new bookcases in. It looks fantastic, and he's a great guy. Uh, please um, put Tony and his son Cole on your prayer list for salvation. Kenny B. would like salvation prayers for unsaved family. Rachel K., prayers for unsaved family, friends, and neighbors. Sandra C., unsaved Catholic family members. Um, I don't know who this is from, but the Lord knows. Please pray for Ray, Johnny, Don, Danny. They are all battling drugs, alcohol, depression, and medical issues. I'm not sure if they're saved. And again, I don't know who that's from. But the Lord does. Marky Mark would like prayers for unsaved relatives and neighbors. Uh, people who are battling illness. Jersey Girl's husband, Tim, had COVID in January and still deals with headaches and brain fog. Bonnie's niece, Lauren, uh, 32 years old, confessed to her aunt that she took the jab. And uh, now she has hot flashes and rashes and hives. And we're going to pray for her healing. Shanna would like prayers for her uncle who has COVID. Um, Kevin Swift has a rare blood cancer. Karen and her husband, Kevin, have COVID and need prayers. They're also asking prayers for protection from COVID for their son. Carol from Georgia is asking for prayer. Um, she had to take a PCR test and it came back positive for COVID. We're also praying for Harmon's son, Michael, battling pancreatic cancer. Chuck Price, uh, he says, please pray for a brother who is dying of cancer that the Lord would give him a testimony with the time he has left. Dawn Martin, best friend, stepbrother Toby with a brain aneurysm and in a coma, needs a healing and he needs to get saved. Cody Baker's dad has leukemia. Karen B., she has chronic illness and she asks us to pray for her. She listens to these broadcasts when she uh, gets dialysis. Uh, Pam is battling glaucoma and needs our prayer. Katrina has been diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. Uh, we're also praying for Tom, who is a 53-year-old man with spina bifida. And um, uh, he has had a tracheostomy tube for six years. And he's asking prayers that it could be removed so he could go back to church. Amen. Dave Evans is asking prayers for his friend, Diana. She's battling lymph node cancer and is not saved. Chona B. is asking prayers for Cheryl Honorio. Um, Cheryl has cervical cancer and needs prayer for healing and comfort. Shelley's long-term friend, Renee, has been diagnosed with pre-leukemia and her husband with congestive heart failure. Please pray for them. Um, Chloe's dad has leukemia and... He needs to get healed. Uh, Joshua Gaskins would like prayers for Luke K. He has LGL leukemia. Joe Rusiello's mom has a number of health issues. She's not saved. 
Roz GB has asthma and scoliosis. We're praying for Anetta up in New Jersey, who had a stroke back in May, that uh, she would be able to walk again. Uh, Roz GB has a prayer request for a friend in Japan, who was an NTEB listener. She has two nieces in the Philippines with a rare form of blood cancer. And she says, please pray for healing and for medical expenses. Uh, Palmetto State Guy praying for his mother Eunice, who had a stroke back in April. Natalie's husband Ken needs prayer for healing from esophageal cancer. Uh, Marisol Barcina has an update on Jeremy. His brain cancer is at stage two. Please pray for healing and recovery and prayers for his mother, Katya, and family. Carla Keck would like us to pray for mom, Joanne Spencer, who was in a nursing home with Alzheimer's. She would love to see her mom healed from this terrible disease and come home. Amen. Roz GB would like prayers for her daughter-in-law, who is battling stage three cervical cancer. Bonnie is asking prayers for 17-year-old Ariel Roberts, she was diagnosed with a glioblastoma. That's a brain cancer. John Henry is in long-term care at a nursing home and would like prayers for strength and um, strength from the Lord and to be a witness to other people while he's there. Clayton Perry is receiving ongoing cancer treatments and needs prayer. Robert Wiley is battling ALS disease. John has stage four cancer, needs prayer. Marie Comfort would like prayer for her friend Tammy. Tammy's mom just passed away from a rare form of breast cancer, and now Tammy's daughter has the same thing. Uh, Kathy Giacomino, please pray that these family members who are saved would get on fire for God. Tammy, Pedro, Parker, Caden, Stephanie, Steve, Owen, and Ian. Rhiannon Smith is having eye issues, and uh, she asks that we pray for her. Absolutely. Uh, Daniel and Charlene asking that a financial burden be removed from their lives. Joshua Gaskin's co-worker's daughter battling depression and suicidal thoughts. Lori Cordes would like prayers for Kevin, a volunteer who is wheelchair-bound. He believes the Lord will heal him and he'll walk again. Amen. And we believe with you. Joe Rusiello, uh, please pray for his wife and her walk with the Lord. Mary Jane is praying for Sister Rianne, who is becoming a transgender. Marie Comfort's friend Cora and Dave both need a healing from the Lord. Um, Donna Rogers needs prayer for health and spiritual attacks. Gail Burge is asking prayers for a daughter who has an eating disorder. Susan Smith is asking prayers that God would give her direction on where to move. Dina's son, Josh, needs deliverance from heroin addiction and homelessness. Chona's mom, Erlinda, needs prayer for health and healing from low potassium problems. Her aunt, Christina, has been bedridden from a stroke, and her father is battling an illness. Street preacher Marie in Philadelphia is asking us to pray for Lucille a childhood friend who has had a stroke and a knee replacement and her marriage is suffering. And Marie asks us to pray for salvation and healing for Lucille and her husband. Connie has pain in her right hip and needs to be healed. Rita would like prayers as she ministers to her sister who has Alzheimer's. That's Rita from Colorado. James Rogers is asking prayers for his son, Ryan, Ryan is saved, but has no interest in Bible study and prayers for um, Atsuko, Yumiko and Lucy. Annabal's wife has asthma. Adrian P. Breda needs prayers for his eyesight and his battle with alcohol. Deborah Milton's son, Billy, has asthma. Rachel Elizabeth has anxiety and um, she also needs to do something about her living situation. Henrik Larson would like prayers for his mother-in-law, Brigitta, who has an an undiagnosed issue in the gut region. His wife, who hurt her right foot, and son, who has uh, balance issues and headaches. 
Heather is asking prayers for her daughter, Sophia, who is questioning her faith, um, partly because she started dating a man who is a pagan. If you date somebody who is a pagan and you are born again, you will have nothing but problems. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? That's Amos 3.3. 3. The answer is no, they can't walk together. Laura Campoy was involved in a motor scooter accident. She needs a healing. Feely would like prayers for her children. They're saved, but they're not living for the Lord. Street preacher Marie, prayers for friend Jackie, who is in a wheelchair with a serious back issue. Uh, Brooke Kettlecamp has ongoing special needs, and um, we just lift her up before the Lord and her mom, Cindy, and Cindy and her uh, and her mom and friends out in, in Iowa have a great ministry going with um, the local jail. And uh, we support that with uh, our free Bible program, Bibles Behind Bars. So pray for Brooke Kettlecamp and Cindy Kettlecamp and Cindy's mom and everything that they got going on over there in Iowa. Uh, Shirley Medor, she needs your prayer. Um, she has a whole host of things going on. And uh, most of all, she needs fellowship. She lives up in New Jersey. Juanita Alberg would like prayers for victory over smoking. Elizabeth A. needs prayers that she would stop drinking and return to the Lord. Amen. Bill and Marilyn up in Georgia, the very first people to uh, work with the NTEB Gospel Billboard Ministry. And um, Bill and Marilyn are longtime supporters of the Free Bible Program, and we greatly appreciate that. Uh, he put a prayer request in front of me last night, and man, we're praying about this, and I have no idea what to do. But if you guys would adopt this prayer, <laughs> uh, Bill and Marilyn are asking prayers for U.S. military stationed overseas. Many, now you're going to find this hard to believe. But many U.S. soldiers don't have enough money for food. Can you believe that? United States soldiers stationed in places like Guam, where my younger brother David was stationed for two and a half years with the United States Marines, they have to use food stamps and welfare checks to put food on their table while they serve this country. So Bill and Marilyn are asking, please pray that the Lord does something to change this dire situation. And I wrote back to him and said, brother, what can we do? Not throwing my hands up, but simply asking. So um, please pray about that. I have no idea what NTEB could do, but the Lord does. And uh, please pray that he would make it plain um, and show us how we can help. Uh, Carrie is asking prayers for her husband, Jerry, with possible dementia. Uh, Michael Duval is asking prayers for Max Gross and his family. Their son, Luca Tyler, has a rare genetic disorder. Please pray for a miracle. Bianca would like prayers for her husband, Derek, to restore his faith and prayers for their marriage. Many people have an unspoken today. Kate, Henrik, Marie, Gail, Joyce, Marie Berger. And many of you in the chat room have an unspoken prayer request. Please remember our overseas pastors um, in the Philippines, Pastors John Reed, Danny, and Arnell. In Vietnam, Pastor Fojan. She's not a pastor, but she's ministering to the Muslims in Turkey. Please pray for Luann. Uh, pastor David Mark in India. Uh, he's not a pastor, but he ministers in Ireland. Stephen Carroll with the Gospel Bus Ministry. Um, please pray for Erad Bayomumisho. That's Erad Bursch in the chat room. Um, and, and he is ministering with the Good Child Missions that we support. Please pray for our street preachers in Ohio, Kentucky Jeffrey. Um, in Baton Rouge, Kyle and Reagan Gorzell. Um, and no, the women are not the pastors, they're not the preachers, but they are the help meet, and we will mention them. Uh, up in Canada, Werner Bukes, Paul and Peggy Caulfield, Adrian P. Breda, Greg Scott, Jeffrey Sapasinik. 
in Australia, Henry Biggs and Jennifer Thompson, um, Joshua Gaskins. He has a gospel tract ministry. He let us know yesterday that he's not actively street preaching, but he is handing out tracts and doing personal work. And brother, in my book, for the two cents that it's worth, that's street preaching. And uh, you will stay on the street preacher list if that's okay with you. And uh, please pray that the Lord would bless Joshua's um, personal work that he's doing on the streets of, I believe it's Virginia. Um, Joseph Rusiello has a street preaching ministry in Eagle Pass. Mike Avram is leaving Bibles at truck stops. Mia would like prayers for Jay, who is a street preacher who preaches to the LGBTQ plus community. Um, Justin, who is Night Watch Autist in the chat room, and his friend Tom Fennessy, um, they have begun a street preaching ministry in Canada. And in South Africa, we have Arthur. And all these people are a part of the NTEB global family. Praise report, Patrick, whom we have been praying for for a very long time, is starting to ask some pretty good questions about Jesus Christ and the Bible. So please keep Patrick in your prayers. Charlton says, I saw my brother earlier today, and I was stunned at how jaundiced he is. Um, That's a liver problem. So um, he says, please put him on the prayer list for tomorrow. Jaundice is a sign that your liver is not filtering toxins. And he says um, he's the one dealing with a severe case of psoriasis that seems to be improving. Please pray for healing and wisdom. Amen. Sandra C., please pray for my parents. The Lord knows the needs. Regina Danner, asking for salvation for Chris, Cisco, Wayne, Kelly, and a healing for Wayne and a healing for Linda's marriage. Water dog, uh, please pray that the Holy Spirit touches those that need special healing today. Amen. Regina Danner, special prayer for Jean, who is a Christian in a Baptist church and debating spirit about NIV versus KJV. Plus, enter to church doors, but if don't attend, then not a believer her opinions. That's kind of a cryptic prayer request, but I think we got it. Uh, Charlton says, uh, please keep Valerie and her four kids in your prayers. Valerie is in therapy to deal with issues that happened a long time ago and now is dealing with the pain. Um, So please pray for Valerie. Angel, uh, please pray for my lost family members. I sent a salvation letter to last night that they get saved before the rapture. Um, And I think salvation letters and left behind letters are a great thing and everybody should do it. And Angel is asking prayers that the letters that she sent last night will bear fruit. Amen. Rapture 57, prayers for my unsaved family. Rob says prayers for friends, family, and neighbors. April, uh, my PT test is on Friday. Please pray for that. I also visited my foster dad last night who has Alzheimer's, not doing well. Um, So please pray for her PT test and for her foster dad with Alzheimer's. Kenny B, please pray for England now that Charles... (laughs) who's comfy cozy with the World Economic Forum, is on the throne. And uh, we did a pretty good podcast on Friday on King Charles III. And I believe that he is going to help forward the end times timeline from a negative way, but it's going to go forward um, all the same. And we pray. Uh, I have family who live in England. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I I, I, I have cousins who live, three cousins, who live in England. And um, we just pray that, um, I mean, that's where where our Bible comes from, the King James Bible. And uh, so we're going to pray that uh, many in England would would get saved. Annabelle, uh, please pray for my wife and I. We have been sick with a bad cold for days. Uh, Julia, please pray for my mother with a leaky heart valve and needs eye surgery. J. Kitty, please, K for, please pray for my caregiver, Trista, in prayer for salvation. K. 
Catherine has an unspoken. Jill says, uh, please pray for the miners caught in the drag. Um, and uh, we are going to do a podcast on that really soon. Um, and please pray for that, too. I hate talking about that stuff, but, well, we have to. And Jill says, please pray for kids who are caught up in the, the, the uh, drag queen movement uh, and the Boise Pride Festival that is going on right now. We're actually going to pray against the Boise Pride Festival. Heavenly Father, man, <laughs> Lord, the need is great and the time is short and the laborers are few. Your word says, Look onto the fields, for they are white already unto harvest. And Lord, give us the harvest mindset. Give us a harvest mentality. The rapture, that's your big harvest, Lord. And we're getting ready to fly very soon. And Lord, hear our prayers. So many prayers, Lord. 35 solid minutes of praying this morning. And Lord, you know all the needs. And if I misspoke or I jumbled something up or I left something out, Lord, you already know. And we come before you and we lift up these prayers for healing that you would heal. Lord, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. If you don't give it to us, we're not going to have it. And Lord, we don't want anything that doesn't come from you. Your word says that every good and perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights. And Lord, we, we reject the works of darkness and we, we look to the light. We look to the, the, the rising sun who rises with healing in his wings, as your word says in Malachi. Father God, hear our prayers and our praise and our petitions, every name, every situation. And Lord, if I've forgotten anything today, Lord, that needed to be said, I lift that up to you as well. And God, I can't say it enough, but I am so glad and so grateful that um, we are a praying people. I can't imagine that there's a whole lot of other ministries that will pray for 40 minutes over the radio. And God, that's a blessing that you give us that spirit to do that. Shauna says, please pray that God gives me the opportunity to witness to my son's girlfriend and to her two children. So, Lord, for all these prayers and for the unspoken prayers of our hearts where people need to be healed, we ask for a healing, Lord. Where people need restoration, we ask you to restore. Where people need to have a burden taken off of their back, be it emotional, relationships, financial work-related, whatever it happens to be, we ask you to take it off the backs of the people who are asking for liberty, Lord. Erad Birch, his wife Elizabeth, um, has been uh, healed from malaria. We prayed for her last week, and he says, thank you, everybody, for the prayers. Amen, brother. Uh, we rejoice with you. And Father God, we pray for the ministry of Now the End Begins in all 50 states, in 132 different nations. Uh, Lord, bless us and hear our prayers. Uh, draw us ever closer to you. Lord, it doesn't matter how big this ministry gets. We're always going to be the old paths, the old ways, the old book, the book, the blood, the blessed hope. And let us never lose sight of that, Father God. Never let us lose sight of that. I always said, that you could have a mega church that was founded on the King James Bible and didn't compromise and didn't stray. I always said that was possible. And Lord, you've given us that mega church. Um, we don't meet together in a brick and mortar situation. But Lord, you've raised up thousands and th tens of thousands of people in this church. And we don't take it for granted and we don't take it lightly. And so, Lord, as a church family, as your body, we ask you to hear our prayers today, answer them according to your will for us. And Lord, we ask it that it be done for uh, your glory and for our good. And we commit these things, all these things, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. 
It really means so much to me that we are a praying people. And I really don't think God would be expanding us the way that he is. And I want you to think about this as we get ready to go into days into t- the message this morning. I want you to think about it. I really believe that one of the reasons why God blesses this ministry the way that he does is because we have not stopped being a praying people. And that is so very important. Yes, we need to stand on the book, the blood, the blessed hope. Yes, we need to hand out Bibles and go preach and hand out tracts and witness for the Lord. Absolutely. But when you have a church that stops being a legitimate, authentic, sincere, praying church, I believe that that church begins to lose its power because the power that we have comes from prayer that we can come boldly before the throne of grace crying, Abba, Father. It is a a, a privilege that we can pray to the Father, and he hears us because of our relationship with his Son and with his blood. And never forget that. And that's why we don't rush through the prayers. And I'll be honest with you, when I watched that prayer list growing, I started thinking to myself, I really don't know if we, if we can continue to do the whole list. Will people really pray over the radio for 40 minutes? Well, that was a year ago, and God answered that question. And I don't ever want us to stop being a praying people because that is the source of our power. That's what put food on the table for George Mueller and those orphans. And he would, he talks about the time and I'll get to the message in just a minute, but George Mueller talked about the time that he, um, he took all the orphans and brought them down to the table for breakfast, knowing that there was no food in the kitchen. And he had those kids bow their heads and to pray, not pray for food, but to pray and thank God for the food that they didn't have. And as Mueller tells the story, while they were praying, a milk truck pulled up to the orphanage with excess milk. A bread truck pulled up to the orphanage with excess bread. And God just coincidentally (laughs) decided to put on the heart of the bread truck driver and the milk truck driver just to drop some stuff off at the orphanage. That's a true story. That's the power of prayer. And we're always going to be a praying people because that's where the source of our power is. And with that, one more song. Now, you know what song I'm going to play next. (laughs) There's no doubt in your mind My message today is on the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I've been playing songs about the blood all morning long. No message about the blood would be complete without playing this song. And after this song, we'll be right back with today's message.
Amen, amen. And I don't know about you, but for me, uh, after hearing about Saved by the Blood in that song, my second favorite highlight in that song is when that lady stands up and she shouts, Amen! (laughs) We call her the Amen Lady. And uh, that song was recorded at uh, Pensacola Bible Institute uh, in 2010. And the man that you hear leading the song is my old childhood mailman, Brother Dave Gervins. And um, uh, he, he is a, he's a good friend, and he's a great brother in Christ, and he's a tremendous song leader. He's in his mid-70s, and he's still on the front lines. He's still on the battlefield uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. So please keep Brother Dave Gervins in your prayers. Um, we started selling a book in the bookstore just last week. And I am so excited for this book. It is a beautiful, and I just want to give a little bit of a plug for the bookstore before we get started this morning. Uh, And you can go to the bookstore at BibleBeliever.com and you can check out um, King James only, of course. But uh, we started selling a book called Ruckman's Apocalypse. And it is a beautiful, beautiful hardcover bound book and um uh it's glossy it has 200 hand painted uh illustrations of the book of revelation and it is filled from cover to cover with scripture and it is a it's a it's a big book it's a heavy book it's a hard cover and i promise you that you will love this book it's called ruckman's apocalypse the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it took him 20 years to put this together. I'm sorry, 17 year. It took Dr. Ruckman 17 years to put that book together. We just started selling it last week in the bookstore. And I promise you, you will, if you love Jesus Christ and you love the book of revelation and the end times and prophecy, uh, you will love Ruckman's apocalypse and the paintings and the scripture Um, So go to BibleBeliever.com and check that out. Uh, Street Preacher Marie from Philadelphia, she just sent me a message and says, India and Africa did not receive their Bibles yet. Uh, That's because sometimes it takes many, many weeks for Bibles to go overseas. Here in America, it feels like the pandemic is over, but it's not over. And shipping is really, really hard. And so um, when you contact us and you say, please send Bibles to such and such a place in India or Pakistan or Africa or Vietnam, sometimes it takes two weeks. Sometimes it takes three months. And I have no control over the shipping. Uh, But please pray that the Bibles to India and Africa will get there, and Lord willing, they will get there. Uh, Kyle Gorzell, (laughs) he just sent me a message and says, Pastor Jeffrey, sorry to bother you during the service. I just asked Pastor John Ree about the Bible supply. He's down to 10 Bibles. And he says, would you like to partner together this week and to see if we can get them some more? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, Tomorrow or Tuesday, I'm going to have an update on our free Bible program and on the Bibles Behind Bars program. And when I tell you that this program has exploded, uh, you're not going to believe how many people want Bibles and how many people are asking uh, in the jails and the prisons and in ministries in foreign countries. And uh, we, we are, trust me when I tell you, it will be stunning when I let you know on Monday or Tuesday once I, I tabulate everything and get it all together. Um, but the free Bible program is, um, if this keeps up, w- w- we should hit 50,000 by next month. Um, so uh, please keep the free Bible and gospel track program, the Bibles behind bars program. Please keep that in your prayers. Uh, and if the Lord puts on your heart to donate to it, please donate and be generous 
because um, we have so many people asking for Bibles now, and I would like to see that we never have to say no to anybody. And um, as we head towards 50,000 Bibles, it it's expensive. There's just no way around it. And I'm so happy that we have this program. Uh, praise report from Kathy Heald. Her husband, Robert, is recovering well after the surgery. He was tested yesterday for neuromuscular response by his new neurophysical therapist, and it looks like he will return to work soon. So we rejoice uh, with Kathy and her husband, uh, Robert. Um, So please keep the free Bible program and the Bibles Behind Bars program. Uh, Lord willing, I'm going to the Fort St. Lucie the Port St. Lucie Jail on Thursday to meet with the chaplain and his assistant, Virginia, and uh, to meet with some of the inmates at the Port St. Lucie Jail. And um, I'm getting a lot of requests for me to travel to places now. And please keep that in your prayers. I have um, this week, I'm going to Port St. Lucie. And then in a couple of weeks, I'm going to the Bible Literature and Missionary Foundation. Um, uh, uh, They have a three-day thing in Tennessee. Then I'm traveling to Suncoast Baptist Church to minister with Pastor Joel Tillis. Um, So please keep me in your prayers. Um, Spray of Sunshine says, do we have extra large print Bibles? Not yet. We have extra large print Bibles that people can buy at the bookstore, uh, but we are working on getting large print Bibles to be part of the free Bible program. So keep that in your prayers as well. Do you see why prayer is so important? That's the only way we're going to get this stuff done. Without prayer, it's, it's, it's never going to happen. But it is happening because we do pray and God has chosen us for a time such as this. And he's given us work to do. And I'm so glad and I am so grateful for that. All right, without any further ado, let's get into today's message. If you're just tuning in, the title of my message is Saved by the Blood of the Crucified One, Jesus the Christ. The first mention of blood in your King James Bible is the shed blood of an innocent man who is, let me pray before I get started. I'm all, I'm all reared up and ready to go today. Heavenly Father, give me power to preach and teach your word. Set a hedge of protection about me and about everyone listening and let your word go forward in spirit and in truth today. And uh, Lord, we stand on your preserved word, the King James Bible. And uh, we're not ashamed of that. We don't make any compromise. We don't, we don't make any excuses. Uh, we stand on the King James Bible. And uh, Lord, we, we believe it to be preserved, inspired truth. And uh, Lord, bless it to us this morning. And if there be one listening who does not know you in full pardon and forgiveness of their sins as Savior, we pray that they would get saved And for those of us that are saved, get us on fire for you. And we commit this time to you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The first mention of blood in your King James Bible is the shed blood of an innocent man who is a type of Jesus Christ, and his blood is shed by a man who is a type of Antichrist. Now, the law of first mention sets the standard for blood all through the scriptures. Genesis 4.10 is the very first place in your Bible where the word blood appears. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. In the New Testament, the blood as it relates to the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross shows you that the blood is a payment to, one, build his church, and two, make a payment for sin for the whole world. We read in Luke twenty two twenty, 20, Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. 
Matthew 16, 18 says, And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, talking about himself, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Bible shows us that the death of Jesus on the cross is the vehicle, and I want you to pay attention now, because there are so many pastors, preachers, Greek and Hebrew scholars, seminaries that don't teach what you're about to hear. Now, I'm not claiming that this is truth that is unique to this ministry, I am saying that what I'm about to say is Bible truth that used to be well known to Christians, but we live in a day and age where the blood of Jesus Christ is being mopped up. It's being erased. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross is not what saves you. Anybody can die for you on the cross. But only one person can shed God's blood for you on the cross while they die. Do you realize that? Yes, Jesus had to die to shed his blood. But it is the blood that makes the payment. The death did not make the payment. The blood makes the payment. The Bible shows us that the death of Jesus on the cross is the vehicle by which the blood was applied as payment. His death itself is not the payment. This is a huge distinction. If Jesus had only died in our place on the cross and not made the payment, then we would remain in our sins with no way to receive salvation. The blood that was shed is eternal. It is God's blood, and only God's blood can keep you eternally safe, saved, and secure. Acts 20.28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Do you realize that it is the blood that saved your soul? It is the blood that keeps you eternally secure? When we first got started today, I gave you um, 1 John 1.7. 1 John 1.7, talking to saved people. 1 John 1.7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light... We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You know who John is talking to? He is talking to people that are already saved by the blood. And from time to time, people will tell me, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says that we are to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, I don't see the expression plead the blood, that's true. But I see 1 John 1, 7 that is talking about people who are already saved, that's salvation, and the blood of Jesus Christ continues to clean us from all sin in our sanctification. So 1 John 1, 7 shows you clearly that after you are saved by the blood of the crucified one, that exact same blood continues to wash you and keep you clean. If first John one seven is true. And of course it's true. Now, in our day, there are people who have very large ministries with followings of millions of people. And they write books and they publish Bibles and commentaries. And they make millions of dollars from the publication of these materials. 
Now, I'm not against people publishing a book and making money from it. The Bible says that the laborer is worthy of his hire. 1 Timothy 5.18 says, Muzzle not the ox that treads out the corn. I believe that if if you are a, pe- a preacher, a pastor, a teacher, a street preacher, and you write a book, and you make money from that book, that's great. There's no problem with that. But the problem that I have is what the books are about. I don't normally play audio clips on a Sunday service, but I'm going to break that rule today. And I want you to listen to this clip and you'll know who it is right away. But I want you to listen to one of the most listened to preachers in the world denying the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Take a listen to this. In your Hebrew commentary, you state that we are redeemed, quote, not by his bleeding, but by his dying. Do you still stand by that and why? Yeah, wouldn't, uh, we're not saved by his bleeding because uh, it wouldn't have done any good if he just bled. This was a big controversy years ago. That people. So there you just heard John MacArthur say that we are not saved by the bleeding of Jesus Christ. Now, haven't I already given you about two dozen scriptures over the last hour talking about the shed blood of Jesus Christ? John MacArthur says the blood is not what saves you. Uh, Some people who were enemies of me decided to fabricate all kinds of strange things, and we got kicked off 55 radio stations and all because they said I denied the blood of Christ. Uh, Well, look. And now he is about to deny the blood of Christ. If Jesus had just bled, nobody would be saved. Um, The wages of sin is not bleeding. The wages of sin is death. And uh, people must understand that it's not the bleeding of Jesus and it's not the blood of Jesus. To speak of the blood of the cross, the blood of the cross, is to simply speak of the efficacious, substitutionary, sacrificial death of Christ. And that is what a split-tongue, devil-inspired, Laodicean liar sounds like. Do I think he had to, to, to actually die, uh, actually bleed? No, not to save us, but to fulfill the Old Testament picture. Somebody suggested that I might have thought he could be bludgeoned to death. Well, I suppose if God had decided that's the way he would die, it would be fine. But the pattern and the picture of the shedding of blood was in the whole Old Testament sacrificial system. And as the fulfillment and the final lamb, he fit that model and that pattern. But we are not saved by his blood. There's a, there's a weird... Did you hear that? Now, I don't have the ability with this dashboard, with the software that we use, I don't have the ability to go back and play like the last five seconds. But did you just hear him say, and I quote exactly, we are not saved by his blood. Theology that floats around that people have to turn the blood into a fetish and they actually believe that, and then I've dealt, tried to deal with this, with some people who accuse me of denying the blood, that somehow God collected all the actual blood of Jesus. Collected it all. And now he's going to talk about a straw man. He's going to talk about people who have a blood fetish. And this has nothing to do with the original question. But this is what liars do. They introduce straw men to divert your attention, to get you arguing about something that has nothing to do with what they said. Around the foot of the cross, put it in a bowl and took it to heaven, and it's up in heaven sitting on a mercy seat, and every time somebody's saved, it's dumped out and recollected and then dumped out again and recollected. Of course, this is wacky kind of theology. That is a total straw man argument. Um... There's nothing magic in Jesus' blood. I mean, Are just, you listening? I'm trying to think that through, right? Can you hear this? There's nothing magic in his blood or his saliva or any other part of the fluids of the human body. I don't need to get too graphic here. 
I mean, what, what, what we're talking about. All right. I can't. I honestly, there's more to that clip, but I'm going to flip over my desk if I listen to much more of that. <sighs> Lord, help me. The reason why I played that clip, I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm trying to show you the theology of a man who has been teaching and preaching the Bible for half a century, who publishes his own study Bible, who, ha who makes millions of dollars from teaching what you just heard. Now, did you hear him quote one piece of scripture? No, you did not. And you will rarely hear him quote scripture when he answers. So, this morning we're talking about the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and John MacArthur says that it is not his blood. He said three times in that clip that it is not his blood that saves you. He said you are not saved by the blood. Now, is that what your King James... Oh, that's right. He doesn't use the King James Bible. Romans chapter 3. Verses 25 and 26. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. How about Romans 5, 9? Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. How about Ephesians 1, 7? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. How about this? Colossians 1.20. I could do this all day long. Colossians 1.20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Are you starting to see the biblical pattern? having made peace through the blood of his cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood. How about this one? If you're born again today, if you're saved, if you're looking to meet Jesus in the clouds, in the rapture, how about this verse that talks about your millennial inheritance? Revelation 1, verses 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own death. No, it doesn't say that. It's not his death. Hmm. Hmm. If only I could figure out what he washed us from our sins in. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own. Oh, there it is. What is that word? B-L-O-O-D. If only I understood English at the sixth grade level and knew what that word meant. Hmm. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hey, John MacArthur, what did Jesus wash us from our sins in? In his own blood. B-L-O-O-D. Man, that makes me mad. The last mention of blood in the Bible brings you first full circle. As the first mention of blood was that of an innocent man, having it shed at the hands of the wicked, so the last mention of it is of a righteous man trampling his enemies and shedding their blood. Revelation 19.2 For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Revelation 19.13 And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. 
Now, we've set the table. That's not my message. That is the introduction. My message today is relatively short. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you have had your sins paid for, they were paid for by the blood of the Lamb. Now, it is true. Jesus had to die to make the payment, but the death was not the payment. The death is what made the payment possible. Turn to Acts chapter 8. Now, we like to say about this ministry, now the end begins, we like to say that we are a rightly dividing ministry that is dispensationally correct. When you listen to our podcast introduction, you listen to our Bible study introduction, we always remind you that we stand on the authority of the King James Bible, that we rightly divide the word according to 2 Timothy 2.15, and that we are dispensationally correct. Those three things, if you have a ministry and you don't stand on the King James Bible and you're in the church age, you don't really have a ministry because you don't have any authority. I know that offends some people, but that's too bad because that's the way it is. If you don't stand on the King James, I didn't say use the King James Bible because there's lots of people like the Mormons who use the King James Bible to fool you. I'm not talking about the people who use the King James Bible because they have to, because they're forced to, because they make money from doing it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about standing on the King James Bible in the church age because it is the authority of the word of God. It is where God has preserved his word for English speaking people. And in our free Bible program, that's the only Bible that we hand out is the King James Bible. Now, we hand out the Spanish Bible and the text that we use. I actually had a man and his wife stop in the bookstore last week, and they were really nice people. They bought a couple of books, and he wanted to know if we had a Spanish Bible. And of course, we do. And um, I gave him the Spanish Bible. I don't speak Spanish, but evidently he speaks Spanish. And I kind of got the feeling he didn't tell me, uh, but I kind of got the feeling that he is a pastor and that he has a overseas missionary um, affiliation. He just seemed like he was a pastor. Really nice guy, great guy, and his wife, very nice people. Um, but it's funny because I handed him the Spanish Bible that we have, the it's called the Valeria. And he picks it up and he starts reading a couple of lines from it. And he says, do you have anything more up to date? And I, I kind of looked at him quizzically and I said, what do you mean more up to date? He says, well, this version of the Spanish Bible, he says, it's kind of written in old Spanish. And I said, amen, brother. <laughs> The reason why he said it was written in Old Spanish, because the version of the King James Bible that we give out is taken from the King James Bible and the Texas Receptus, and it uses Old Spanish to give you that true doctrine. And it just really put a smile on my face when he said that it's written in Old Spanish. Um, but the point of what I'm saying is if you have a ministry and you don't stand on the King James Bible, you don't really have a ministry because you don't have the true, pure word of God. And you have to have that book to minister. And this is why we see so many preachers and teachers and seminaries and Christian colleges and Christian schools teaching things that amount to heresy 
They're not using the King James Bible. They're not preaching from the King James Bible. The NIV and the ESV removes references to the blood in hundreds of places. It just rubs it right out. And so people like John MacArthur, he doesn't use the King James Bible. He used to use the ESV. And last year, he, he uh, published his own study Bible. Now, I haven't read that study Bible, but I can bet you dollars to donuts that that book erases hundreds of references to the blood because that's what he teaches. He teaches the blood does not save you. And so this is what you can expect in the end times. And there are so few ministries that stand on the King James Bible and that preach the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. So let me show you something in Acts chapter 8 that I think is really interesting and maybe something that you haven't considered before. I'm, maybe you did, but maybe you didn't. In Acts chapter 8, this is the first time that somebody gets saved in the church age. The kingdom age closed at the end of Acts chapter 7, and we talk about that many, many times in our Bible studies. So Acts chapter 8 is the functional beginning of the church age. And we see the very, very first person in the entire New Testament who gets saved by grace through faith alone. Now, you might say to me, well, how is that possible that the Ethiopian eunuch got saved by grace through faith alone when Paul hadn't written Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 yet? Now, if you know your Bible and you believe your Bible, these things did not start with the Apostle Paul. It was a mystery that was present but not known. And God used the Apostle Paul to reveal these mysteries. But don't think for a second that the Ethiopian eunuch got saved by anything other than grace through faith. Because that's exactly how he got saved. Keep your finger in Acts chapter 8 and turn to Romans chapter 16 and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The Bible doctrine of grace through faith for salvation in the church age did not begin with the apostle Paul. Because the Ethiopian eunuch was saved by grace through faith. But the Apostle Paul was chosen to reveal it as a doctrine. Look in Romans 16 verse 7. Romans 16 verse 7. Paul says this. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who were also in Christ before me. The body of Christ did not start with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul revealed the body of Christ. But the body of Christ, obviously, according to Paul's own testimony, existed before Saul became Paul. So, in Acts chapter 8... Let me show you something that's really, really interesting. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. This is the story of the salvation of the Ethiopian eunuch. So the very first person who was saved by grace through faith alone in the church age was a black Gentile man who is not named, but he is a eunuch from Ethiopia. Let's start reading in Acts 8.25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, 
and go toward the south onto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was sitting and uh, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I? except some man should guide me. This is the New Testament principle of Bible study. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as the sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Now turn to Isaiah chapter 53. And this, to me, is the amazing thing. In Acts chapter 8, you have the first Gentile getting saved by grace through faith at the very beginning of the church age. And the very, very first thing that was ever discussed in the church age is Isaiah 53. Jesus going to the cross to shed his blood. That was the very first doctrine ever mentioned for the church age. And that was 2,000 years ago. Now, the Holy Spirit could have started with anything, but he didn't. The very first doctrine ever given in the church age for the church age that resulted in the salvation of a Gentile by grace through faith alone is Jesus going to the cross to shed his blood. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. This is what the Ethiopian eunuch was reading. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. What is Isaiah talking about? He is talking about the Jews who cried out, Give us Barabbas! Give us Barabbas. We have no king but Caesar. Let his blood be upon us and upon our children. That's what Isaiah is prophesying about. Blood, blood, blood. Verse 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But... He was wounded for our transgressions. What flowed out of those wounds? Blood. He was bruised for our iniquities. What makes a bruise? It is bleeding under the skin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. You know what stripes do? They open up your skin. That's what stripes do. And you know what happens when your skin is opened? I want you to look at that picture that I just put in the chat room. Look at the picture on the right-hand side. Those are ribs. He was, he was whipped thousands, 
There were thousands of holes in his back. Do the math sometime. Two Roman soldiers, two cats of nine tails, 54 pieces of glass and metal in each one of those cat of nine tails, whipped 40 times. That's over 2,000 holes in his back. And what came out of those holes? Blood, 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 blood. (laughs) You've got to be, I almost said you've got to be dumb to miss that. But not really. You just got to be unsaved to miss that. Saved, unsaved people don't see that. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. You know what happens when someone is slayed? Blood, blood, blood. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? I will. I will declare his generation. I will be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so will each and every one of you who name the name of Jesus Christ. You have been called to be a witness. And what are you called to be a witness of? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. On the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures. The Bible says, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet... It pleased, verse 10, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Again, I'm not a doctor, but I know what a bruise is. It's a subcutaneous hemorrhage. It is bleeding under the skin. And when he was whipped, that blood came out. Blood, blood, blood. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of his of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Turn to Revelation 16. Turn to Revelation 16. You know what the tribulation is all about? It's all about blood. Revelation 16.6. For they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. You want the blood, God says? You reject my son's blood? I'll make you drink blood. You know what happens when you drink blood? You die. You drink enough blood, you die. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. You can't get away from that blood. Revelation 19, the second coming. What is Jesus going to do? He's going to avenge the blood. (laughs) Remember uh, from Revelation chapter 6? Those souls that were under the altar? What did those souls say when they cried out? Revelation 6 verses 9 and 10. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Are you starting to see one of the main hallmarks of the entire Bible? I've taken you all the way from from, uh, Cain 
shedding the blood of righteous Abel in Genesis uh, chapter 4, and I've taken you all the way to the book of Revelation. Blood, blood, blood everywhere you look. Now the day is coming where Jesus Christ is going to avenge the blood, all blood that has been shed on the face of the earth that has been shed unrighteously. The day is coming where the people who are the enemies of the cross, the enemies of Jesus Christ, the enemies of the word of God, Jesus is going to require their blood. You think I'm kidding? Turn to Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This is the battle of Armageddon. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Antichrist has one crown. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. You take blood out of the Bible and you don't have a book that can save you. You don't have a book that can keep you saved. You don't have a book that lets you go before the throne room of God crying, Abba, Father. You take the blood out of that Bible. You don't have God um, avenging anybody. You take the blood out of that Bible and you have Antichrist winning. That's what you have. You have the wicked defeating the good. If you take the the blood out of that Bible. What were they told in Acts 15? To not eat blood. Because the life is in the blood. Your eternal security is in the blood. You don't have the shed blood. Look. Salvation is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Salvation is not a prayer. Salvation is not a prayer. You don't get saved because you prayed any prayer. What saves you, and this can be part of your prayer, but what saves you is when you make a transaction. Your sins for his righteousness and the price of that transaction is shed blood. That's what salvation is. Now, there have been many, many groups over the years and the IFB churches are some of the hugest, if that's a word, are some of the biggest violators of Bible doctrine. There is no such thing as telling any other human being, say this prayer and you will be saved. That is not Bible. That is a a man-made theology designed to make you feel better about, look how many people we got saved. You cannot get saved by, here, say this prayer and you will be saved. Not possible. The Independent Fundamental Baptist Church, the IFB, are some of the biggest violators of that. So what is salvation? Salvation is coming to the cross of Jesus Christ and understanding that you are lost and headed for hell. And that the only thing that can save you is that somebody had to die in your place and not just simply die, but a payment had to be made. And that payment is blood. And the only blood that can save your soul is the blood of a righteous, perfect man. And that man is Jesus Christ. He never sinned, but he became sin for us. He had our sins put upon him but he didn't have any sin in him. And he went to the cross and he shed God's blood. If anybody ever tries to teach you 
that the blood that Jesus shed was not God the Father's blood. Reject them as a heretic immediately. But don't take my word for it. That's not my opinion. Acts 20, 28. Acts 20, verse 28. The Apostle Paul says, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God that's born again, men and women and children, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Whose blood? God's blood. Jesus Christ is God the Father in the flesh. Don't call me a modalist. Don't call me a oneness theology person. Don't get mad at me because I believe the Bible and you don't. The Bible clearly teaches that Jesus Christ is the body of God the Father. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe the Bible. And when Jesus went to the cross, he was God manifest in the flesh. Do you believe that? Do you believe the Bible when the Bible says that God was manifest in the flesh? What does that even mean? What does that even mean? It means that the Father has a body, and that body is Jesus Christ. That's what that means. Colossians 1, 13 through 15. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. What do you have redemption through? Through the shed blood of God the Father in the body of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's where you have redemption through his blood. If all he did was die, then you're not saved because he had to make a payment his death was not the payment. His death was the vehicle by which to deliver the payment. I'm not a PhD. I'm not a Bible scholar. I don't know Greek or Hebrew. But I know that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh because the Bible says that. I know that when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he made a payment and he provided redemption for me personally because Colossians 1 says that. I know that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God because the Bible says that. I know that 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. I may not be a PhD, but I'm smart enough to know that because I have God's preserved word and I believe what the Bible says. Now, let me wrap all this up for you. If you're listening to this broadcast today and anything I said made you mad, good. Because at least you're thinking. At least I have your attention now. And now that I have your attention, if you're not saved, I invite you to trust the only perfect person who ever lived who was 100% man and 100% God, and I declare him to you today, Jesus of Nazareth. And he went to the cross to make a payment for you. 
God does not love you in 2022. God loves you in 29 AD. John 3.16 shows you God's love in the past tense. And there's a reason for that. For God so loved the world, past tense, that he gave, past tense, his only begotten son, that who's... Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're not saved today, come with me to the cross of Christ, Jesus, the righteous. And I want you to see the blood and water flowing out of his body. I want you to see the wounds in his back. Wounded so much that his entire rib cage was exposed and his blood, every drop of that blood left his body. Acts 20, 28 said it was God's blood. It's eternal. Doesn't matter where it went. Doesn't matter where it is right now. What matters is that it was shed for you on the cross at Calvary. And that blood is what saves you. And I'm going to ask you to pray with me right now. The prayer, this prayer won't save you. But what's behind the prayer will. And I want you to understand, if you're not saved today, I want you to understand that nothing can wash away your sin but the shed blood of Jesus Christ. No good works. If you cleaned up your act, and didn't smoke, drink, or fornicate, or tell a lie for the rest of your life, you still have to pay back all the other stuff that you did. And you can never pay that back. It is not possible. Because God will not accept anything else than His shed blood as payment. And if you're lost today and you desire to get saved, pray with me. Heavenly Father, I understand that there's nothing that I can do to save myself. And just repeating words, however sincere, won't buy my pardon. But I understand, Lord, from this message today, that it's your shed blood that made a payment for me. And that salvation is a legally binding transaction. And Father God, today I give you my sins, past, present, and future. I give them to you. And I ask you to give me your shed blood as payment for my sin that you've already made for me. And I receive that payment of your blood for my sins. And I ask you to wash me clean. In Jesus' name, amen. That is salvation. And we understand that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection on the third day according to the scriptures. But it is the blood, the blood, the blood that saves your soul, that washes you clean, and that keeps you saved. That's where eternal security comes from. And that's why nobody in the Old Testament had eternal security Because they didn't have the blood. They didn't have the blood. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, today for this message. Thank you for uh, revealing Bible truth to us this morning, God. And uh, I pray, Lord, we pray for every lost soul that's listening that somebody will get saved today. And uh, we pray, Lord, that for those of us that are saved, get us on fire for you, that we could get something done that will make it through the judgment seat of Christ. And we ask it, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, I want you to know, too, that starting last week, last Sunday, um, the Cup of Porridge program has already begun to feed hundreds and hundreds of Ugandan children. Please keep Erad Bursch and his wife Elizabeth in your prayers. And um, uh, we are going to continue to support the Cup of Porridge program. 
and uh, they got fed last Sunday. They got fed this Sunday, and we are providing funds for an entire year of Sundays for Ugandan kids to get um, food in their belly so they can hear the gospel and receive it without thinking about how hungry that they are. And please keep Erad Birch and his wife Elizabeth in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you for um, attending this Sunday service. And Lord willing, we'll see you back here tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for another rightly dividing King James Bible study. Have a great Sunday, everybody. In shady green pastures, so rich and so free, God leads us children along. Where the waters cool flow, bathes the weary child feet, lead us children. Leads them along Sometimes on the mountain Where the sun shines so bright God leads His children Leads them along Sometimes through the valley through the darkness of the night The same God Leading those same children along Some through the water Some through the flood Some fire but all through the blood some through great sorrow but it always give them a song and it's in the night season and all all the day long Won't you let him Take you through the fire Let him Take you through the flood Let him take you through the fire And we all must go through the blood Won't you let him Take you through great sorrow He'll always give you a song And it's in the night, 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 in the night season And all Eh, 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 oh, all the day long. No, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. It's in the night season, and all day long.